So I'm Karen Stevens. I'm presenting on Ramping Up Accessibility, which gives you an idea of how maybe you can replicate what I've done at EA at your own companies. My background is actually in programming. I have degrees in computer science and software engineering and focused on graphics programming for most of my career. I'm also an accessibility advocate and also I'm disabled. Um, I'm nearly legally deaf. I lip read and it gives me a lot of empathy as to what it's like to be left out and what it's like to be overlooked. So I use that to try as part of my motivation to trying to make it so everybody can game. That's my goal. Originally, I want, my first experience with accessibility was with the Windows 7 inbox games. I was the tech lead for all the games, like, including Minesweeper and Solitaire, and those were part of the Windows operating system at the time. So they were required to follow Windows operating system accessibility standards. So they fully used screen readers. You could be blind and deaf and still play Minesweeper with the Braille terminal, and we've had people demonstrate this before. So I had an idea of what it would take to make a game fully accessible to an extreme that very few games would ever actually do. <laughs> My mentor, who's oddly enough in the audience, and I made this slide three months ago, so I had no idea she was going to be here. Um, Jane LaFury was at Microsoft, and since I was losing my hearing, I started losing my hearing in my 20s, she helped me figure out what this means for me and how to basically get past this. Because I, did I didn't understand like, how to deal with meetings or anything. So she really helped me and also pulled me into a bunch of different accessibility things at Microsoft. And I really appreciate that. She's probably the biggest influence on my life. <laughs> So I moved to EA, uh, starting with Madden 25, as, again as a graphics developer. I knew nothing about any sport. I knew nothing about football. I was simply trying to make skin look real, among other things. So um, I spent like three months staring at Peyton Manning's face at point blank rage. Um, he's got a bridge in his forehead, by the way. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so when I looked at Madden, I looked at it, and I'm, I see all these red arrows and yellow arrows and green arrows, and I'm like, how are people going to deal with this if you're colorblind? I have a cousin who's colorblind, so I had a pretty good idea that this was going to be a problem. And then I had a friend where I was playing different games with him, and I knew he was a huge Raiders fan. And I asked him, are you looking forward to the next version of Madden? And he's like, oh, I can't play it. Oh, I'm sorry, why can't you play it? Well, ever since they went to 1080p, the pass icons and all the other icons on the field are way too small. I can't see them anymore. Oh, well, that's really good feedback. At the time, I was just a graphics developer, literally working on Paint Manning's face. So um, I told him, I said, well, I have no authority or power to say like, I can actually fix this, but I promise you that if I ever get the chance, I'm going to bring it up and try. So this takes us to 2014. Um, all these slides are approximately in chronological order, where we had a game jam. <clears throat> in my Game Jam entry, now keep in mind, I actually took this picture about a month ago. So these are the boards from 2014 as they are after being moved for four years. So they looked way better then. But <laughs> um, I, the Game Jam basically was, I, was how I pitched the feature to the team. It was, uh, most people had like video game, like we had different categories. Like you can have a game, you could have features in a game, you could have some other tool. I focused on Madden accessibility. So I know it's way too small to see those boards. So the general information that was on them was explaining what accessibility is, the size of the populations, um, example of people who couldn't play the game, like people I knew that couldn't play the game. Not just him, I knew others as well. And examples of what other companies are doing, and also screenshots of relevant forum comments. Basically, people complaining they can't play the game. So I put those right on, on the board. And I listed a bunch of problems and solutions with pictures. So for colorblindness, I took a screen cap of the game, and then I put a, used Photoshop to put a colorblindness simulator on it, and then I put arrows saying, these are not supposed to be the same color, and this one's completely missing, and things like that. Because if you have like red on a dark background, it disappears. So this gave me um, a chance. I, I actually won uh, by a landslide. They, they put the top three pure vote, but I've been since told that it got about twice as many votes as the next highest vote. <laughs> so, which is great because this is all from peers. That means that the people I'm working with, we're all on the same page, and that's wonderful. 
This may, man, meant by winning, I had a chance to pitch to executives. So I, you, that was the prize. The prize was essentially you were allowed to officially pitch whatever you did. So I did, and the points were about the same as the slides you, those you saw earlier for the poster. I just put it in a PowerPoint. And I created a narrative as to why some people were unable to play Madden and how we could fix it. And I, that's basically um, how this happened, where I was allowed to put features into uh, Madden in Madden 17. And I made the, the, an option so you can enlarge all those on-field graphics. So everything was twice as tall and twice as wide, optionally. And my friend could play Madden again because he could finally see all the icons and everything on the field. So everything on the field that you can move that took user input had an option to be greatly enlarged. I also added colorblind support at the same time. Uh, the colorblind covers red, green, and blue. I had a, what I did is I had the list of employees internally who were colorblind. We, I sent out a list through HR and they emailed everybody saying, if you wish to self-identify as colorblind, please contact Karen, she's looking for people. I got super, super lucky in that there was pretty much every type of colorblindness in the building. Even blue, which is like one out of 30,000 people, we still had someone in the studio who was blue colorblind. So that was extremely useful in testing all of this. And uh, this also came with brightness and contrast features, which greatly helped for people with vision, like low vision type issues. So here's an example of those arrows I was talking about. And I'm like, the red ones, in fact, they're dark even on this screen, but they completely disappear if you're colorblind. And the yellow ones look the same as the red ones, especially if the top one where there's different shades of red and gold. If you want more information on this, I have a talk that I did last year uh, at GDC that covers um, practical fixes with Madden. I recommend looking at it. So after I got these features into Madden, I needed a way to get feedback back from people. Like, does this actually help you? Is there anything else you're having problems with? So I created a Twitter account, because that was an easy way. I, basically, I went and I asked one of the producers, how do we get feedback from people? They're like, we use Twitter. I'm like, OK, I can do that. So I tried to come up with a name that sound reasonable for accessibility. And I created an internal distribution uh, list called Accessibility Feedback at EA.com, which I allowed people to use. The reason, there's two reasons it's a distribution list. One, it was super easy to create. There's a tool that does it, and I didn't need to contact anybody. Two, it's a list, meaning that I could, if I, once I ramp the team up, have more than one person answer these emails, because it would go out to a group of people. Now, currently, I'm still the only person on this list, so all email goes to me. But it's good to know that eventually I, that would not have to be the case. Uh, I also have the same account name, EA Accessible, on Twitch, AudioGames.net, Operation Sports, Reddit, EA Forums, and a bunch of other places. Speaking of uh, these different sites, AudioGames.net is a wonderful site if you're looking for your blind audience. Uh, they're most likely playing your games already. They were already playing EAs. If you're trying to find blind gamers and trying to reach out to them, go to audiogames.net. In order to keep all this information, like I started um, reaching out to people and reaching out, like the same time I did the um, external email, I made an internal version as well. And I used that to try to collect people from different uh, teams. So, uh, also, I basically, I'm going to flip back and forth for a minute. I gave multiple internal talks, and every time I did, I let people know what that email was. And I let people know they could email me if they wanted to be added, or they could add themselves. That gave me uh, about 60 or 70 people or so that spanned the entire company. Now, the reason this was useful is that I could use that list then to say, hey, does anybody know of a team that, know someone on this team? And it let me reach out much more quickly to try to get information. Because when I created that internal email list, I uh, did the one for getting feedback. I, at the same time, I realized that, um, sorry, I realized that I needed a way to get this information back to the teams. So this helped me do that. And then I could use 
that list I made internally to get it back to the teams. Because I had people ask me when they're like, oh, you're collecting information on Madden. Well, do you collect information on other games too? I had no reason to say no. I'm like, yes, please give us information. That's a really good idea. And then I just started reaching out and figuring out who to give all this information to. So I also, like I said, gave a talk at um, GDC last year. That covered everything that was changed on Madden for Madden 17. So I recommend looking at that if you're interested in brightness, contrast, colorblind support. The colorblind code for Madden is actually in the PDF file for the presentation. So you are welcome to use Madden's colorblind code. <laughs> and there's directions on how to use it too. So my, I have two forms of currency, feedback and public relations. Um, that's how I motivate others to try to help. I try to say, this is everyone up until like, oh gosh, um, last summer or so, this is the list of people who've con that have published something relating to it. Now, uh, Gama Sutra published a bunch of things. And um, I use this to say, hey, look, we're mentioned again. Hey, look, we're mentioned again. Look, more positive PR. That, that really helps. Um, it shows that EA really does care, and that's important. And we do care. <laughs> So that's one form of currency. The other one is feedback, social media leveraging. So w with the Madden 18, we switched engines. That's well known. That meant our schedule was super, super tight. At the same point in time, I had already been on audiogames.net talking with blind gamers uh, who are already playing Madden and asking them, where are your pain points? So I went through that, and then I'm like, OK, well, there's no way I'm going to be able to get it in the game right now. If I, as, if I even try to just suggest adding another feature, I know the answer is going to be no. So I waited until the world was not on fire. And I, the very first content patch, I'm like, OK, I think I might be able to get it in now. So I already had some emails from people requesting uh, this type of feature. So I requested on the forum, I went on to the forums and said, hey guys, can you please, if you want this, please email me. And they did. I had uh, at least 15 different blind gamers emailing me saying, I want to play Madden. I took all those emails, I attached it to an email that I sent to the executive producer saying, we have a bunch of blind gamers that really want to play the game, and here's how we could fix it so they can play the game. Can I please, please, please do this? And the answer was yes, I could. So I ended up having to take some shortcuts just to make this safe. So I took enlarge, which was previously just enlarging. And I'm like, OK, that sort of means visually impaired. I don't want to create a new user setting after we ship the game. That could cause safe, game safe issues. I didn't want to mess with that. So I just repurposed it as calling Vision Assist instead. And it, it was safe to do. Rumble support. This is what happens when a deaf game developer develops features for the blind. Um, I can't hear. So when the people were asking me for features, they were asking me for audio features. And I sat back and I'm thinking, how on earth am I going to do this? I can't hear well enough to do audio features. And I knew that I would be the only one who would be likely to implement this. So I took a step back and I'm like, OK, so what's our common denominator? Deafblind. OK, I can use tactile. So I ended up using Rumble for everything, which had a nice bonus of we didn't need any files. So we didn't need any audio files or file I.O. or anything. We just used existing Rumble. And there's a talk I'm giving at 4.40 PM today called AAA Gaming While Blind. Um, it will likely be available on the web after GDC. So I also, then last year, we we've had, and EA in general, has decided to have employee resource groups. So there's like a women's resource groups, group, LGBT, there's Latino, and accessibility now. So I used this to invite, have a, I had the kickoff, and during the kickoff I decided, wouldn't it be great if we could just like ask people, what do you need as a type of thing, and prove that these gamers exist. So I invited a blind, completely blind gamer who is a current uh, University of Northern Florida student, so he was close to campus, to come on, come on in and play games. Uh, I gate let him and I said, OK, I want you to play games with the team. I want you to pick the game, and we're not going to tell them what it is until they go to play with you. 
and I'm pretty sure you're going to beat them. And that's exactly what happened. It was Mortal Kombat, which is the game you saw on the screen just a few minutes ago. Uh, at the same time, I also was working on those uh, rumble features. So I had him come into the studio, and he got to try them out before we shipped them. And I also had him sitting in a lounge that people kept walking by intentionally, and they kept stopped going, wait a minute, how is he doing that? By the end of that day, we had pretty much dispelled the fact that blind gamers don't exist. Everybody pretty much acknowledged at that point that that was the case, which was what the whole point of this was. Now, I represented deaf gamers during this. Uh, we had another employee who has mobility issues who was going to represent mobility, but he had to drop out in the last second. But we still covered some of his area because I knew what he was going to be talking about. So up until this time, um, I was still a Madden developer. I was basically, this accessibility was my side task. So like all the, the emails and stuff I was handling, like I was still getting emailed and tw uh, tweeted game things, like game uh, feedback, and I was still sending it out to different teams. As people asked me questions, I created an internal website and kept adding things to the internal website to answer the questions. So if somebody asked me a new question I didn't have on the website, a new page got created. The website's pretty extensive these days because of this, and it would be from any, anything. Like, I have a section on customer support because we did actually change our customer support practices. This happened after I got an email from someone saying, customer support keeps hanging up by me. He was using a voice relay service, and the first thing you hear is a computerized voice explaining what a voice relay service is. They would hear a computerized voice and hang up. <laughs> I'm like, OK, no, don't do this. Please don't do this. And we had it changed in the uh, customer service database, uh, recommending to advisors what to do, and basically never hang up on somebody who's really trying to get help. <laughs> It was an accident. They didn't mean to do that, but um, things happen. They also have a last resort of emailing me if all else fails. Um, I need to get that fixed, actually, but because I have better options for them now, and that is on my to-do list for literally next week. So by not, as an EA Sports Accessibility Lead, I have greater access to the sports teams. So I've been going to like Vancouver now several times a year because that's where UFC 3, FIFA, and NHL are. And I stay at Tiburon, but Tiburon's my base, and that's where Madden and NBA are. Now, it covers all platforms, so really that's 17 titles. The major reason why I'm the EA Sports Accessibility Lead is they're like, we're going to throw 17 titles at you and see what you do, and we'll go from there. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's been a little overwhelming. Um, I still have not finished all the mobility work I need, uh, the uh, mobile work I need to do. I've been mostly trying to say, okay, let's get consoles sorted out first. And once I get that, then I can expand out and do more. Um, my role is still evolving. I, still, I am basically self-directed. So pretty much everything I did, I've just been allowed to go on. I have an internal JIRA database. I log, everything I do is logged in the database. I have weekly reports to upper management where I explain what I'm currently doing, what happened in the current week, and what's happening next week type of thing. And they can look at the database any times. Those reports are actually created on the website as well. There is a status report section, and every status report I've ever done is there. Because that is my, that is my form of accountability, and I just came up with that myself, because I wanted to make sure they knew what I was doing. My non-sports role currently is the same, where I'm still passing feedback and uh, answering questions and giving suggestions to any team that wants it. And it really, at this point, it's been most of the teams that at some point have come to me. Team kickoffs and organization. So I went, when I first started doing this for the council games, I put together sort of a kickoff meeting for every single team. And I visited every sports team and provided like, an overview of, this is what accessibility is. This is why it's important. Here's everything that's happened on Madden so far as an example of the types of things we're doing. And then would give them in, uh, information as to what may be top things they should be looking at to fix next. Now, I have no authority. So anything I get done is done through basically persuasion of like, Look, here's a bunch of feedback your users have, have asked for. They've been asking for this feature for a long time. It'd be wonderful to give it to them. 
Um, another way is from media saying, look, this other game did this feature. They totally love it. We should do that too. Those are my biggest two forms of persuasion. So far, it's worked relatively well. I've also used uh, these lovely goggles that I blinded everybody with to um, show them what it would be like to be borderline legally blind. The reason behind this is pretty simple. I, I postulated, if you are not legally blind, you should be able to play our games, right? They're like, OK, yeah, we'll buy into that. And I'm like, OK, here's the border of legal blindness. Put this on and try playing the game. <laughs> it um, naturally helped make sure that we were following better standards for brightness and contrast and uh, size because it was immediately obvious if you put these on. Plus side is, it also helped the um, couch scenario. Most people are playing console games from their couch. When we're in the studios, we're playing at about 12 to 16 inches. That's not very realistic. Moving people 10 to 15 feet away from their TVs is also not realistic. However, putting goggles on all of them can actually be done. And each team in the sports realm has gotten these goggles. So we, and they've already made some changes based on that. And they're like, is this OK? Well, can you see it with these goggles on? Not very well, then it's not OK. <laughs> and we do have some standard like mathematical, you should be between x size and x size and this contrast ratio and all that. But this is a really quick and easy hack for early prototypes saying, can you even do this? Because if you can't do this, you're not passing. <laughs> so that worked out really well. I also have a form. There's 17 different forms. I have a website where you can get these. But there are 17 different forms of vision loss they cover. I have a full set of all of those. Um, I do use those for sort of a awareness training that I did during the kickoffs. For, uh, I, used, I brought in several. These are the ones, though, that I've been giving out to the team because the, the theory of if you're not blind, you should be able to play the game, which is, by the way, pretty persuasive. So I have internal team pages for each of the teams. Um, it's off of the same website that I'm giving all of the information on. So each team has their own section. And it lets me give, like, I have a status report matrix type thing for them to fill out. And it's, I keep it relatively easy on them, where they can just pick which option of where they are. Like, had you scheduled this yet? Have you started this? Are you not doing it at all right now? And so I have some idea and can report to management where everybody is. And uh, all this together, I actually won an internal award called the Sharky Award. Um, Tiburon is, is Spanish for shark, and that's the name of our studio. Everything we do is based on sharks. We get shark balloons for our birthday. The studio is very big on sharks. So the awards are called Sharkies, and they're shark fins. <laughs> Um, I won the Innovator Award uh, because of all the work I've been doing to try to get uh, more people to be able to play our games. And the cool thing about this is this is also peer voted. So that means I do have the support of the people in the studio, and that is a wonderful thing, and it does make things a lot easier. So new development. This happened last week. I finally managed to launch ea.com slash able. It is an accessibility website. Um, it covers it's solely for accessibility type reasons. All of the game sites are going to eventually link to this page. This page, any of the some games, will link back to the games themselves. Reason being, the last thing you want to do with an audience that has maybe vision issues is to hide things on them. So by putting this here and having a portal, then going from there, it makes it a lot easier to find the information on different games. The portal has three basic subsections right now. You can have a detailed, uh, this, this came up earlier, detailed descriptions of what features are in the game. So you have any idea of whether or not you might be able to play it before you buy it. This may sound familiar because somebody else was commenting earlier today about the need for that. I fully agree. Uh, we have text manuals for the games. They are platform specific. They avoid tables to avoid tab issues. They are completely text. There are no images whatsoever in these. And it works pretty smoothly with the screen reader. It's usually organized by lists that lets, lets things be grouped together for screen readers. And it works relatively well. And I have had people test these. So we have also have, in some pages, um, guides for the blind. Now, originally, before this site came out, all of my guides were on Reddit, which was not ideal. But I had no place to put them. 
which meant that they weren't really clear HTML and they were kind of a pain to navigate through. But at least they were there. So I finally can have nice, neat uh, looks of everything and that they're easy to search. We have hyperlinks now. It's great. Now, each game is at a different level right now. I had to cut the team off, literally cut the team off, saying, guys, I have this on my business cards and I have this in my presentation. We need to ship it. <laughs> so, because um, this literally came out like last Wednesday or Thursday. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, there will be more things coming. Uh, this is a start. UFC 3 is basically the template for what I like to see as a minimum of game pages doing in the future. Um, we'll, we'll expand from there. But yes, I had to cut people off. I really needed this to ship. <laughs> we have forums now, too, that are off of that page. We have a news and resource section where I can announce like different like things for the forums uh, or different ways I, you know, people can file bugs or whatever. General discussion, so if anybody just wants to talk about, hey, is anybody else playing this game type of thing, go for it. Technical issues would be like, I think there's a setting, but I don't know how to turn it on, or I don't think it's working correctly, or something like that. That's what that's for. Bug reports are my most valuable section for me. And I would love everybody who's been tweeting me and emailing me to file the bug reports. The problem with the tweets and emails, and I never intended it to be two years of tweets and emails, um, was that people and teams move. So I might send the information to the team, and it can get lost pretty easily. So by um, having it in the database, these actually log into databases, and they're permanent. So we can move them between databases. We can move them to teams. It's really easy to, to manage. And this will be, going forward, my most valuable asset and getting uh, things pushed through. So please, if any, anyone here or anyone watching this has any bug reports, please send them in. And it's ea.com slash able. So you can follow me on Twitter for more updates. I am still EA accessible. I realize that accessibility feedback and kstevens at ea.com both don't fit in Braille on a business card. So now I'm able at ea.com. Previous email addresses all still work. Uh, you can provide feedback via ea.com slash able. And if you're looking for these, this is the website where you can get them. Thank you. <laughs>